backs. My name is Prachi. The very first commercially sold lipsticks were created by the perfume house Guerlain in the late 1800s. And this is a video in which I go through swar swart? <laughs> And this is a video in which I go through, swatch, reckon with, and discuss all of my red, orange, and hot pink lipsticks. Hi. Hello. There's actually some, like, dispute about that fun fact, which is not to say that there's some dispute about whether Guerlain was the person who first like commercially sold lipstick or not, it's more about like the exact date. Because I read some sources which said that the very first lipstick that Guerlain put out was in 1870, and then a couple other sources said that the very first lipstick that Guerlain put out was in 1884. Just know that the very first like modern lipstick that you could actually buy was created by Guerlain. We are back in my bathroom because I think the lighting situation here is more diffuse and less sickly green than whatever's going on on my desk. I'm still trying to figure out a spot in the apartment where I can like film with natural lighting. The problem is that my room doesn't have any and I happen to live with a roommate and I'm trying to keep the fact that I have a YouTube channel like on the DL. I don't like people in my real life like knowing I have a YouTube channel. So I think we might be getting more like bathroom movies from now on. I'm gonna have to figure out when my roommate's work schedule is to see if I can like sneak film stuff in natural lighting. Anyway, this is part two out of three of me going through all of my lipsticks. I initially thought this was going to be like a two-parter series, but clearly like I don't know when to shut up about lipstick. I still had well over 45 minutes of footage by the time I edited everything down. So what you're about to see here is me reckoning with all of my reds, bright pinks, and oranges. My like rich berry tone ox bloody pinks as well as all of my lip glosses and lip liners will be one final video uploaded probably sometime like next week. I want to upload all of my summer faves as well as my like involved check-in where I discuss all of the lessons that I've learned from my no buy year now that I've been on it for Today, September 5th, hopefully the day that I'm uploading this, it'll also be my first day of class by the way, so I don't know if this will actually go up on September 5th. September 5th is the 7 month anniversary of my no buy year. I'm more than halfway done, there have been a whole bunch of big changes and revelations, and so the check-in containing all of that stuff, as well as some of my summer hits and misses because my burnout just meant that I didn't upload any hits or misses for June, July, or August. <laughs> Those will be coming up before the resolution of this series and before my very last lip swatch video in which I do all of my neutral pinks, hot pinks, berry tones, really dark rich ox bloody colors as well. Anyway, this intro, like every intro on this channel, hella long. Do you know my sister? She once told me, she was like, have you thought about making your videos like less than 20 minutes long so people actually watch them? And the funny thing is like, there was actually a very brief moment in time where I consciously tried to make videos that were around 20 minutes or less. But by now, like seven months in, I've just made peace with the fact that I release really long videos. As it is, it's like a feat for me to be able to condense like an hour and a half's worth of footage into like 30 minutes or less. And I personally want to be like satisfied with the work that I have put out there. I want to make sure I didn't like cut things out or unnecessarily like censor myself or something in order to try and like beat the algorithm or whatever. And actually I've said this a couple times before on my channel, but like long videos really don't bother me. It's ironic. You think they would because I have ADHD and like the stereotype about ADHD is like, oh, attention issues, blah, 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 whatever. But like the thing I found for me is it's not so much the length of content that makes something boring, it's the pacing of it. When someone's talking really slowly, when like the flow of information is slow, that's when I'm more likely to get bored, lose track, turn away, etc. And so what I do for almost every single YouTube channel I watch, the one exception is the YouTuber Luke Alexander because he talks so fast that if I put him on two times the speed, he's like unintelligible. So excepting him, I put every other YouTuber I listen to on either one and a half, 1.75, or two times the speed. And the moment like the flow of information increases pace, it doesn't matter to me how long the video is anymore. I will sit down and watch like the hour long video Hannah Louise posted and released on PR at twice the speed in 30 minutes and my attention won't stray even once. 
Anyway, the point I'm trying to make, and a thing I've just gotten a lot more comfortable with lately, is like, I don't really care if people watch my videos all the way through. Like, if I am boring you, I'm not holding you hostage. Click off, my guy. I'm gonna say what I need to say and take as much time as I can to say it, because it's my channel. And if I don't get to make the final decisions on that, then like, what am I doing here? Anyway, I was trying to wrap up this intro before we went on this tangent. Wrapping up this intro for real now, it's lipstick time. Let's get it! Here we see all of my red lipsticks. I will say I didn't include like orangey reds in here. These are more of my like neutral to cool tone reds. So these are all of the lipsticks. On the very left are the two lip stains. Moving from left to right, we have the Sephora Rouge Lip Tint in Ruby, the VT Cosmetics BT21 lipstick in, honestly, I don't remember the shade, but the character with the little heart on his head is called Tata, the Tata Glow Lacquer, then the Clinique Matte Pop Lipstick in Icon, the Besame Lipstick in Red Velvet, the Besame Lipstick in Victory Red, Max Ruby Woo, and then the very last one to the right is the Smashbox Always On Matte Liquid Lipstick in the shade Boss. So when it comes to selecting my favorite of the red lipsticks, the ones that I like really want to grab onto first and foremost, these two Besame red lipsticks are what come immediately to mind. Of the two of them, the one that I actually like more is the color Red Velvet. It's the darker one to the left over here. And it's the exact shade of lipstick that the actress Hayley Atwell wore as Peggy Carter in the Captain America movie and in the show Agent Carter. And there really is something about Besame Cosmetics, like the way that they so committed to the vintage aesthetic, the way that all of their lipsticks have a year imprinted on them. So this is the year 1946 red velvet and there's something special about the fact that like agent carter wore this lipstick because i think a lot about what her character represented in the captain america movies about how she really stood for like female empowerment and for breaking barriers in your time and being ahead of your time and of not letting what anybody says about you who you are where you come from actually affect your potential and what you want to do right and in the context of asian carter i mean it's purely in terms of her being a woman in a man's world but i take that message and I cross apply it to, you know, my race and my sexual orientation and my social class and all of that kind of stuff. The things people say about you to demean you, the ways people tell you that you like can't do a thing or can't be a certain way, that's simply a lack of vision and imagination on their part. It has nothing to do with me and who I am and what I'm capable of and what I can achieve in this world. Weirdly enough, like wearing this lipstick helps me channel a little bit of that energy. A little bit of like, I don't give a damn what anybody else thinks about me and what I'm capable of. I know myself. I'm a strong, confident, badass woman. I can and will do what it is I've set my mind out to do. That's so heavy for a lipstick. I know, I know. But like a lot of times when I have to like write papers or essays or give a presentation or I'm just like really nervous about a thing, this is the lipstick I reach for. And occasionally this other one by Besame in the shade Victory Red because this is color matched to the shade of red that women used to wear when they were in the US military during World War II. And listen, I know the ladies who wore Victory Red during World War II were probably like white ladies who were super racist and would absolutely hate my ass because I'm an Indian immigrant. But the symbolism of it, of like women being able to do anything, even if at that point in time, real talk, it was like white women who were able to do anything. I choose to sort of focus on kind of the more empowering side of it and I really tend to reach for these lipsticks when I feel less confident because even though it's like just makeup, it's not just makeup. Like makeup is a way to express oneself and be confident. And I love the stories behind these lipsticks. I love the way that they make me feel. The second lipstick that I just absolutely love and which does actually make me feel so awesome when I wear it, like there's something about a red lip. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the fact that it's such a like bright color. Maybe it's like the iconography of it, the way that it's been 
a representation of like femininity, whatever the hell that means because gender is complicated. But the imagery around a red lip and the way that it's an instant confidence boost whenever I'm wearing red lipstick, it's really quite incredible. And this Smashbox liquid lipstick in Boss was my go-to red lipstick for years. I bought this the moment this came out. This shade of lipstick was the shade created by Smashbox in collaboration with the YouTuber Lily Singh. And like, listen, I have, as a brown person, very, very complicated feelings towards Lily Singh. I have certain issues with her particular brand of comedy and the way in which she employs Indian stereotypes and all of that kind of stuff. But at the same time, like, I cannot deny just how important seeing her face on YouTube was to me. To see somebody who looked like me, who came from the same culture as me, the same background, to watch her videos and her message, her overarching message of like positivity and hanging on and like being unconventional and not necessarily the child that her parents expected her to be, but still managing to like retain love and respect for her parents and find happiness in herself that was so valuable and in fact when she like recently came out as bi that was a seminal moment and like lily saying much like zayn malik much like mia much like every single south asian western celebrity who has <laughs> exhibited some kind of problematic behavior evokes very complicated and conflicting feelings in me regardless of that this lipstick this is it. It is so incredibly flattering on my lips. It's the very last one on my hands here. This lipstick made me declutter Ruby Woo by MAC. Ruby Woo is the shade right next to it. Ruby Woo was in fact my go-to red lipstick. It was the first red lipstick I ever bought. It was the only red lipstick I wore for years. And when this came along, it dethroned it entirely. Like I decluttered this to my sister because I loved this Smashbox liquid lip in Boss so much. And every single time I have ever worn this lipstick, I have received a gajillion compliments. People literally have stopped me on the subway when I've been wearing this. There are multiple people in my family who have bought and owned this this lipstick because they have seen me wear it and on so many different occasions for Indian weddings just with casual outfits on all of my like Instagram photos Facebook photos everything like I'm so frequently wearing this lipstick and it is so beautifully flattering against my skin that lots of people have bought this lipstick purely because of me this is the lipstick that I put on my mother on the day of her wedding it's an incredible lipstick I have had it for so many years and I have used the crap out of it that it's now pretty much done and dry. I don't know if the camera is able to capture this, but it's like empty, right? I'm scraping at the sides. It's very thick. It's very dry. I had to struggle to get this swatch to look even. I had to go over it a whole bunch of different times. It's done. Like I have truly used the lipstick from start to finish. And this is my like one and only matte red lipstick. Like you can see from everything else on my arm that these two at the end, Ruby Woo by MAC and the Smashbox lipstick are the only truly matte things. Everything else has a sheen. So when I saw the writing on the wall regarding this, I asked my sister, to whom I had decluttered Ruby Woo by MAC, if she was actually using this color. She said she wasn't, so I have gotten it back. It's one of those shades of red that I have seen across so many different skin tones and no matter who it's on, it just like livens up the face and it somehow makes my teeth look like really white. And since I'm on my no buy year and I cannot repurchase this lipstick because I have other red lipsticks, I'm willing to use Max Ruby Woo again. I've reappropriated this for my sister. I will say that you like 100% have to wear lip balm underneath this because if you don't like rest in peace your lips, they will be so ridiculously dry. This retro matte finish of a lipstick is so unbelievably matte that even over lip balm, this retains like it's incredible matte appearance. This Smashbox liquid lipstick is much preferred to MAC's Ruby Woo. However, this MAC lipstick is going to be the one that's staying because this Smashbox one is sadly finished and has to be thrown out. Okay, now I kind of want to address these two sort of more liquidy tint or stain products. This one was a present from a friend. This one was one that I bought myself and actually, as you can see, I've used a whole bunch of it. 
it's down to around here. Both of these will be staying. They are slightly different from each other, as you can see at the very end. This Sephora one is a little bit more of like a ruby, deeper pinkish red, and this has more of an orangey tint at first glance. However, the stain that this leaves is a lot more of a pink tone red than an orange tone red, which is why I've lumped it into like the neutral cool red category. Both of these are absolutely staying in my collection because both of them are actually about to make it into my June, July favorites videos. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in the video, but the reason why I really, really like these two products is because they allow me to achieve a glossy red lip. The traditional method of achieving a glossy red lip would be to either use a red lip gloss or to like layer a lip gloss over a red lipstick or a lip liner, but the problem with that that I've always personally found is the risk of smudging. Lip gloss is kind of like a very smeary, smudgy type of product. There was a period in my life where I owned an intensely pigmented red lip gloss. It was an absolute mess. So what I've been doing this entire summer, because I want a juicy, glossy, bright, and bold lip, I've been putting these lip tints and lip stains on first, waiting for them to dry so that they're completely budge-proof, and then I've put a gloss on top of them. And so I end up getting this really beautiful, like juicy, glossy red lip with none of the mess and none of the fuss. The last lipstick we have here is this Clinique lipstick in Icon Pop. It's the third shade from the left, and it's one of the darkest reds I own that still very visibly looks red on my lip. This was actually in my, I think it was in my February favorites, and it's what I like to call my winter red. It's like a slightly deeper, sort of more elegant, evening winter style of red. It's very clearly distinguishable from all of my other colors in its depth, and although it's technically a matte formula, you can see that it's actually not as flat as either the lip tints next to it or the liquid lipsticks at the very end. It's more of a comfortable matte finish, and I really, really enjoyed it. So she stays as well. So to the left, we have all of the red lip products that are staying, and to the right, we have the one red lip product that's actually used up and will be making its way into my empties and then out of my collection entirely. These are my four cool tone bright lipsticks. Basically my bright pinks. I'm holding this one because it doesn't have a flat bottom. It basically just looks like a really giant pill. So let me go ahead and swatch them for you. So ignoring those two lines on the bottom, from left to right, we have the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in Soul. We have the L'Oreal Red Lipstick in Frida's Red. We have the BT21 VT Cosmetics lipsticks in Struck Pink, the Mong collab. And finally, the Shuomura lipstick in MPK376. Okay, so from this bunch, the one that is 100% staying, because in fact, at the start of my no-buy year, this was the only bright pink lipstick I owned. It was the one that had survived every single... KonMari Declutter to be the only one of its kind is this Shuomura matte pink lipstick in the shade MPK376. This was part of the 2017 Christmas collection from Shuomura. It was the Shuomura Super Mario Brothers lipstick. As you can see, Mario is all over this tube. And actually, the color of the outside tube is a pretty close approximation for the color on the inside. I love the packaging, I love the concept art, I love the way that it looks against my skin. I get a lot of compliments when I wear it. I've been reaching for it a lot during spring and summer. If I could only keep one, it would be this one. And those of you who saw my makeup collection at the start of my No Buy Air, you all know that that's not just lip service. It truly was my only one at the start of the year. The next favorite from the ones that are left is this one. This is part of the BT21 VT Cosmetics collab. It's this very, very beautiful bright pink. It's this third one down over here, and as you can see, it has like a very pretty lustrous sheen to it. But the thing that I really, really like about it is that as I wear it throughout the day, although the lipstick loses its gloss, a very pretty color still remains behind. And this has like a mild staining effect on my lips so that my lips look like rosy and healthy and bright throughout the entire day. I'm gonna turn my hand to the side so y'all can see sort of the color comparisons. It's just ever so slightly like warmer than the Shuomura lipstick, but still very firmly a pink. 
and I do love the fact that it's called struck pink because I have been quite struck by it ever since I received it. Additional factors for why I'm 100% keeping it is because of my friend got it for me and because the character on this lipstick tube, Mong, is an emoji character that I actually really like. But I'm also not like the kind of person who, if this lipstick was garbage, would have kept it just because I like the character because there are a whole bunch of other characters that I really like who had lipsticks in shades that would totally have not been flattering on me. I'm keeping it because it's a beautiful color. The extra stuff is just part of the aesthetic charm. That leads me to these two lipsticks over here. So this NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the color Soul is one that I haven't actually worn that much recently. I reclaimed it from my sister in a video that I will link up in the cards up to the right, but funnily enough, I haven't really used it that much since then, and I haven't had a chance to form an opinion on it. But looking at it swatched on my hand next to everything else, it's clearly much cooler and more purple than all of the other things on my hand. It's singular in terms of its color in my collection. So I think what I'm going to do is put it in purgatory, try and force myself to wear it throughout the rest of the summer, and then form an opinion. Which brings us down to this final lipstick. So this is the lipstick I was actually wearing in my May check-in, and a couple of people in the comments told me that this was a really beautiful lipstick, that they loved the way that color looked, and the way that I chose to contrast it with my blue top and my earrings and everything, but looking at the lipsticks on my hand, it's actually very, very close in color, especially in person, once I kind of look past the gloss, to this BT21 lipstick. And the reality is, I reclaimed this from my sister <laughs> back in May, and I wore it for my May check-in, and I've worn it like one or two times since, and I really, really like the way the color has looked. But ever since this lipstick came into my life as a gift from my friend, I haven't been reaching for this at all. The place that this lipstick had in my collection, I think has been really successfully taken over by this one. So I think I'm going to declutter this guy into... So... I think I'm gonna declutter this guy. I think this one's gonna go into the box. And if I find myself wanting to like go back in and reach for it over the next couple of months, then perhaps I'll bring it back into my collection. But if I truly do just end up reaching for this lipstick every single time I wanna create this sort of like rich, vibrant, slightly warmer tone pink look, then I'll be able to sort of let it go in peace. So when it comes to my bright pinks, these two are a definite yes. This one is in limbo, and this L'Oreal lipstick is getting decluttered. I would like to say, in defense of this L'Oreal lipstick, that it's a very, very beautiful color and a whole lot cheaper than either of these two. I don't even know if this one's available in Canada. Like, this might just be like a thing that's available only in East Asia. And if people were ever to ask me for like a flattering pink lipstick at the drugstore for women of around my skin tone, so like anywhere between an NC37 to an NC42, like this is the one. It just doesn't have a place in my own collection anymore, I think. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Here we have all of my oranges, including orangey reds. This is somehow the section of my lipsticks that has like expanded a lot even during my no buy year due to gifts. Like these three lipsticks to the right are like new acquisitions during my no buy year. These two were a gift from a friend who got back from East Asia. This was part of like a gift set that my friend picked up after she bought me a bunch of expensive makeup at YSL as a thank you. Because um, I think if you purchase above a certain amount, which she definitely did because she splashed out, you get like a little pouch filled with like mini sizes of certain pieces of makeup. And so she kept some of it, but she gave me the pouch and this lipstick and a couple other things. So all of these are like brand new to me this year. Whereas these four were lip products which I had either like deliberately decluttered or like misplaced and rediscovered as I was moving. This is a lot of orange lipstick for a person who at the start of my no buy year 
did not like orange lipstick at all. I have mentioned this in a bunch of previous videos, but I feel like orange just like isn't really flattering on my skin tone, which is weird because I have like a really warm skin tone and people are always like, you should wear orange, you should wear orange. But for years, I've always just thought that it didn't look good on me. Funnily enough now, like six months into my no buy year, wearing orange lipstick like a couple times on my channel, wearing a lot of orange lipstick over the summer, especially since I acquired these two bad boys. I think it might have just been like a confidence issue. I think orange is a very, very bold color. And I think in my own head, I was like, you have to have a certain level of confidence or class or style or something in order to be able to like wear an orange lipstick and pull it off. And I was like, that really isn't me. And I think I just, I don't know if it's just that I like care less now about what other people think or if maybe I'm able to look at myself in the mirror wearing orange lipstick and not think that it looks like crazy out of place. But I actually have been enjoying the orangey lipsticks that have come into my life and the one that I like reclaim from my sister and recover in. All right, so here we can see all of my orange and orangey red lipsticks. Ignore the two stripes to the very left. They're the stains from the red lipsticks beforehand. Going from top to bottom, we have the Sonia Kashuk Velvet Matte Lip Pencil in Poppy Nude, then the MAC Matte Lipstick in Lady Danger, then this really glossy one in the middle is the YSL Mini Lipstick in L'Orange, then down here we have the Matte Retro Matte Lipstick in Dangerous, and the MAC Matte Lipstick in Chili. To the left we have the BT21 Glow Lacquer in pop of orange, and to the right we have the BT21 Cream Lacquer in Syrup Red. So to the left is Shuki, the one with the orange cap over here, and to the right is Koya, the one with the blue lid. Let me just turn my hand a couple of different angles so that you can get a sense of the colors. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm definitely going to be keeping these two. The same things that I said about these red lip tints previously apply to these two as well. I've been wearing these a lot, both as glosses and matte like a stain, ever since I've received them. And actually, these two products are what I would like to credit for making me more comfortable with the idea of wearing orange. So both of these are like a definite yes KonMari products that spark joy. This one, um, Pop of Orange, is a little bit of a deeper, more red-toned orange. It's the one on the left. And this one, Syrup Red, ironically, is the more orange of the two. It's slightly lighter, slightly brighter. It's the color I was wearing in my June check-in. Let's now discuss the one orange lipstick that I was really comfortable wearing pre my newfound love of orange. That would be my good friend Chili by MAC right here. So it's actually the last swatch down here. As you can see, it's this very, very beautiful chili color. It's aptly named. It's a beautiful, almost brick tone red. It's slightly brighter, I think, than a true brick color. It's just like a very autumn-y color to me, and I absolutely adore it. And for years, this was like the most orange of a lipstick I would go this was like the only orangey tone lipstick I could stand to wear. I'm hyped to use it this fall, so she stays. All right, so of these four, the one that's definitely going into purgatory because I don't know how I feel about it yet, I haven't really worn it, is this YSL mini lipstick in L'Orange. I'm very, very glad that this is just like a mini that my friend got for free and not something that she bought me like a full size of because she somehow thought I would actually wear it. Ignoring the two stains, you can see that it's clearly the glossiest of the bunch. All of these other lipsticks are matte finishes. This is like very shiny, which is intriguing. I think that might make it almost perhaps a little bit easier to wear because then it will look sort of more like a juicy and bright gloss instead of like a very, very bold statement of a bright lip. So I am excited to play with it and try it. Into Purgatory Shop My Stash Land, it goes. Now, the two lipsticks that I found while decluttering are this Sonia Kashuk Velvet Matte Lip Crayon in Poppy Nude and this mini size of the MAC lipstick in the shade Lady Danger. Do not let the fact that the outside packaging of this 
is like beaten up and the stickers falling off and everything, fool you. I'm about to roll this lipstick up and you will see that it is nearly pristine because I have been far too intimidated to actually use it. I bought this lipstick on a whim, on impulse, because the color Lady Danger by MAC, this really bold, bright, reddish orange that you can see up here, it's considered like a classic shade, a cult favorite. Everyone always talks about Ruby Woo, Russian Red, and Lady Danger. And there is something just very like seductive about the name. Lady Danger sounds like the name of like some badass spy. Lady Danger sounds like a woman who gets things done. A woman who's just incredibly like bold and dynamic. Something about like the cult status of this and the way that I've always sort of admired the name made it so that this became a product that I wanted to want, right? I, I wanted to be worthy of wearing this lipstick. I wanted to be bold enough to wear this lipstick. And you know, I'm just gonna pull this sticker off. It's bothering me. I don't think I'm intimidated by this color anymore. I think I'm ready to wear it. So it's gonna go right next to the YSL lipstick into the purgatory area. I also don't really know how I feel about this Sonia Kashuk poppy nude lipstick. So the Sonia Kashuk one is the one all the way to the very left. And looking at it swatched on my hand, it looks like a slightly more yellowy orange than Dangerous, which is the first one on the left, this one right here. And decently close to both Lady Danger and the lip stain in Pop of Orange. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in Purgatory for now and see if I want to reach for it over Lady Danger or the Shooky lip stain in Pop of Orange. And if it turns out that I'm really not reaching for it or when I put them on my lips I don't feel like there's a tangible difference, then I'll put it into the decluttering box. For now, it's in purgatory to go into a Shop My Stash. Which brings us finally down to this MAC lipstick. This is the MAC Retro Matte Lipstick in the shade Dangerous. I owned at one point in my life four different Retro Matte lipsticks. Ruby Woo, All Fired Up, Flat Out Fabulous, and Dangerous. And there is something about the formula of just this shade, Dangerous, that is so much worse than all three of those other shades. The thing about Ruby Woo, All Fired Up, and Flat Out Fabulous is although they're very dry, they still go on really smoothly. And they look really good on my lips once they're there in that they don't look chalky or pasty or like they're emphasizing texture or anything like that. Now part of that is because I put a lip balm under all of them, but I put a lip balm under this too and this still ends up looking weirdly chalky. Like the lipstick doesn't want to mesh together with itself. It's not super visible on the swatch on my hand. Oh, you can kind of see it when I turn to the side. It's almost like patchy and a smidge streaky, which is not a thing that any of the other MAC retro matte lipsticks are. The only way I'm able to get it to look decent is by putting a gloss over top of it. And this blotted down with the gloss on top of it is actually what I'm wearing in the intro of my how to get out of depression squalor video. Since I reclaimed it from my sister, that video was the only time I wore this lipstick. Every other time I've tried to wear it, particularly as like a matte orangey lip, I've hated the way it looks. And not because it's an orange, but because it was just kind of like a chalky, patchy mess on my lips. I don't know if I just got a bad tube. I don't know if it's just this particular color that's really bad because the other three retro matte lipsticks that I've used were not like that. But now that I have a whole bunch of other orange lipsticks to play with and try, I just don't want to be bothered with this. So into the declutter pile it goes. This was just one of those lipsticks where using it was a stark reminder of why I had originally decluttered it to my sister. Now that I've decluttered it successively twice, I truly don't feel any regrets. Like I'm 100% sure that I don't like that particular lipstick and I don't want it in my collection at all. And that wraps up that section of my lip product reckoning. 
Incidentally, the lipstick I'm currently wearing is the Smashbox Liquid Lipstick in Boss. I figured I should bust it out for one last hurrah before I truly put it in my empties. Getting it to apply to my lips evenly was a struggle because it's truly died out, but I figured I should pay my respect to it one last time. As always, thank you so so much for watching, and I hope you have a great upcoming week. And even if the rest of your week ends up becoming messy or imperfect, I hope that you're still able to create and experience some truly beautiful moments. Bye!